Okay, so in this video we're going to show you uh, two ways that you can actually print job files um, through the EFI RIP. Um, there are uh, two key ways that you can bring data files into this particular workflow and print them out, in this case, to the Stylus Pro 9900. Uh, the first way I'm going to show you is how to do it via hot folder. Uh, as many workflows as you've created, uh, you could define a hot folder to have this workflow basically look for data in that hot folder, pull it out, start to process it with all the information defined in this workflow, and then automatically print it to the output device. In another video, we'll go into detail about how you can use these little green buttons on and off to uh, take advantage of certain things um, as you go through your workflow. But for a simplicity sake, we're gonna, just going to show you really quickly how you define workflows or define hot folders to make a workflow Good active. Idea. All right, so the first thing I want to do is obviously make sure I have that workflow selected. Um, go under Input, and you can notice down here is where we define where our hot folder is. It's under General, by the way. Um, right now it's grayed out because this workflow is active. Let's uh, turn this workflow off. Uh, that means that no jobs can come into this workflow, which allows me now to define a hot folder. I'm going to go ahead and hit Choose, and now I'm going to browse out on the network uh, or on the local hard drive for a folder that I would like to use um, to import data files into and then have this workflow automatically pick it up out of that hot folder. Um, Larry has a lot of um, uh, good ideas in this era on how we create folders and lay things out. You know, I found over the years going to different printers, they don't seem to pre-think what should be the hot folder location, how they should be named and all that. Yeah. Uh, you have a good idea here. Why don't you give us an idea of how you laid this out for people to use? Yeah, so what I do is, is basically create one folder and the name can be anything. I like to call it transfer because uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to transfer a file over the network or locally um, into a hot folder. So that transfer is actually with the, within the computer. That's the folder that I'm going to share to the network. Within transfer, I then have um, all my hot folders that are linked to specific workflows. So in the case of what we have here, I would select the, the Grackle coded 1v2 verified. Um, I could have any number of workflows. So we have one that's not verified. I could have a Grackle that's, say, nested or scatterproof. I could have a Grackle that's comp. I mean, you can have just, you know, uh, a whole host of different um, hot folders. But in this case, um, Grackle coded 1v2. Um, this hot folder location can be on, on the root drive um, that server's installed. It can yep. be a network drive. Um, you know, if it's on the same computer as the RIP, you know, probably on a secondary on D drive um, is a good place to have it so that I.O. and disk resources, those type of things are, are optimized. Um, if you're going to do it across the network, um, you know, you want to have a good switch, gigabit Ethernet and all that set up to do it that way. But, um, cool. Very um, cool. Yeah, this is a good idea. I like the way you're structuring the file folder. So basically, you create a folder that matches the exact name of the workflow and define each workflow to match that folder so it's very clear to people on yep. the network. So we're, since we have a workflow that's named uh, Grackle Coded 1v2 Verified, which means any job coming in here is going to be matching the Grackle Coded 1v2 standard for color management, and then we're going to tell this workflow to auto-verify every proof, uh, we're going to select that folder name uh, that makes sense, which is this one here. Hit OK. Now we've tagged that. Uh, we turn this workflow on, and now you notice it's grayed out, so I can't mess with it. So now at this point, Larry, any data file, in it, you know, the EFI RIP supports a lot of file formats, yep. but PDF, pretty much all the key file formats you want to use. Any file that I now send into that hot folder, once it's finished copying into that hot folder, uh, the RIP will uh, see it automatically import it, automatically start processing it, and right. work with that workflow, and then output it automatically. Right. The way we're set up, it's, it's going to rotate it. It's going to optimize it for the media width I have loaded. Um, it's going to search it for spot colors, probably automatically pull out the spot colors, and process it and print Very and verify. Cool. So. And it's, everything is defined by how we define that workflow. So that's right. how the job gets handled. Very cool. So that's one way you can bring jobs into the, uh, into the workflow, and that's a good way to leave it on that way all the time. Um, in addition to a hot folder being defined, I can also bring a job into this workflow through Job Explorer. Um, job Explorer is a uh, part of the RIP that we'll talk about in another video in detail, uh, but it's where you see jobs coming in uh, into the network, um, into the work, various workflows, the status, and you can define all that stuff and show what you want to show here. Uh, it's a pretty slick interface, actually. Uh, it's cleaned up a lot from previous generations of RIPs that I've seen in the past. Um, but another way you can bring a job into a workflow is through this interface. Um, you can obviously do it through, you know, file import job, uh, or you can click on the icon for importing job. You get a screen that browses your computer and your network. In this case, I'm going to select actually one of the PDF files that we use and to you, be certified. You could shift click and select multiple files at this point. Yeah, that's right. So we'll select one for now and hit open. 
Um, you get a screen that says how do you want to import the job, which workflow do you want to put it in basically, and it's listing all the workflows that we've defined in the RIP. Um, since we've only defined one workflow, there's the workflow that's now currently shown up. Uh, I select it and I can just hit import at this point. It will automatically import the job, process it just like it was through a hot folder and actually print it. I can also with this uh, feature tell it to bring the job in and hold it. Uh, if I do that, the job comes into the RIP, spools, and puts itself on hold. Uh, and I can look at the job a little bit, did a little bit of previewing here, uh, see the file size, the format, the file name. Uh, you can see the RIP right now is spooling the job, creating a preview of it. If I click on that, I get a quick proxy image, low res image of what that job looks like and how it may fall on the page. We have a video that we'll go on to later, which goes into more detail. And at this point, uh, since I told it to bring it in and put it on hold, it's now waiting for me to evoke it to print. I can simply select it uh, and hit the print icon. You can also right click on the name and hit print and then at that point it'll start processing and printing the job. Yep. So anything else you want to add to that Larry? Pretty uh, simple. Pretty simple. So pretty simple way of printing. Two ways of bringing jobs in uh, to the workflow to get printed.